light. Man in the house, what he clean and he cook, right? Nigga ain't shit, different sheets every few nights. Y'all, future don't look too good. This nigga ain't shit tired of the same old thing. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, ain't shit tired of the same old thing. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, hey, you know what I'm made for. Diamonds on the table. I get what I pay for. I got it. Forgetting the peace. Yeah. Treaty until you can leave with a piece. Leave it to me. Yeah. I'm a chef and I let the whole family eat. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the 5 W's Interview Show. My name is Reese Sutter. I am your host, and today we have a very special guest once again. This is a dude who I did not meet recently. I met him about two years ago when I was just getting my start in this industry, in music, in just photography and that whole world. I met him through a buddy named Tyler Pengelly, amazing photographer. I was helping Tyler out on shooting a podcast in this amazing studio downtown. That's all I knew. So I show up to this studio. And uh, I meet Sam. It's actually his album's release listening party that night in this amazing, huge studio downtown. There's so many people there. Uh, his producers are there. We get to hang out. We get to see all the music beforehand and record this dope podcast. And it just we we talked a lot that day, and it was just such a great time. We instantly hit it off, and we have bumped into each other countless random times since then. Many like, times. After shooting concerts all randomly, I've walked into him on the street. I've met him at house parties. I've met him walking around the university <laughs> that we, uh, that I went to. He, we've just, our paths have crossed so many times and we finally are sitting down to create some piece of content together and just have a great time. So Sam, how are you doing today? I'm super excited. I'm super excited to, to finally sit down with you and discuss <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I've, I've passed across a million times. It's always been like super quick. So yeah, finally yeah. being able to sit down with you is awesome. So I'm, I've, all my time is yours now. Dope. Okay, so just to give you guys some context on who Sam is. Sam is a rapper, a singer, an actor, a dope dude, and just all around nice guy. Uh, he's a local here from Vancouver, uh, but he also did some growing up down in Wisconsin, if I'm correct. And yes. uh, just uh, his music is absolutely amazing, and uh, I'm really excited to see what uh, comes from his acting career. Uh, it's it's just uh, it's been a great time. I would describe his music as almost Kid Cudi esque, but with harder bars. Uh, oh man! <laughs> if people can take a compliment like that, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty great time listening to everything he's done. And uh, we are just gonna jump into our first question of the five W's, which is our who. Oh, I think we got some. We good? Yeah, we had some, some problems. I guess somebody did something in my house. Sorry, uh, my so, bad. Cool. So we're just going to jump into our first question, the five W's, which is our who. And I cannot start an interview with you without talking about this person. I think I know you. I think you know who I'm going to talk about. All but right, yeah. I just want to know, who is Marvin, a.k.a. SV Rev? Uh, SV Rev is uh, a guy I met at um, probably my first official recording like studio session ever it was the first time i ever got to record music he was just an audio engineer and for some reason him and i just hit it off we were joking about some random stuff or something i guess yeah. and he told me he was working on beats i said well i'm trying to work on music and then we <laughs> we eventually like got into this a studio started working on music and then we worked on some songs in the, like for a few for first songs and it was cool they were super trash. The first few songs are super <laughs> trash, but we had our, you know, our wits about us and we were passionate and like, you know, we thought something good could come from it. So we kept working and kept working. And he's now my main producer. He's Marvin. He's like um, a great friend of mine as well. We're constantly just hitting each other up just to kind of check on, see how each other's doing and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. he's just, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's just my creative force. I don't think I'd be anywhere I'm at right now musically or as an artist or anything, if it wasn't for him, I owe him a lot of things. So as much as I bring a lot of ideas to the table, he, he morphs me and he's kind of like, uh, if I'm Frankenstein, he's the doctor. He's just, <laughs> he puts it all together, you know? <laughs> he does it all, really. Yeah, the guy behind the scenes. And I just want to give like a shout out to this guy because uh, he's just such a cool dude. When I met him that first time two years ago, he was just so cool, calm and collected. I remember he had like some super sick shoes on and it was just... I just want to give him a very specific shout out, not to take down your part of the creation of I or Desire, your debut album at all, but Marvin absolutely kills it on that thing. Like, oh, yeah. My, I just want to give him a shout out for making the song and the beat for Soho, which is like one of the shortest songs on the album, but it's like, it's like my favorite and it's basically just Marvin going off. 
for yeah. like the first 70% of the song. Then the last like 30% you come in, drop some super smooth bars and it like ties it all together. But uh, I just wanted to like make sure people know that he's in the picture and uh, it, he's amazing. No, he's absolutely amazing. He's pro he's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever received as an artist, you know, to be fine, to finally meet someone, especially early in your career, someone that gets your process, someone that's willing to work with you and someone that's just like so humble yeah. and everything. And he's just like, let's get this work done. Let's make amazing things. It's he's really a gift and I couldn't be more thankful for him. Dope. And just to a follow up to this, because I know he does it. What well, it appears like he does a lot of the more technical back end aspect of the stuff. But what is your involvement in like the beat creation process and stuff? Or is that something that you kind of just leave up to mostly him, or do you get involved and jump in there a lot? Uh, I usually get in there a lot. Like usually when when he was here, like um, he actually moved to the UK a few like uh, was it like last year or the year before? Yeah. And. Um, I usually come in and like he'll have like a beat or something ready or I'll have an idea. So it's usually never the same thing mm -hmm. twice. So if I come in and I say, hey, I have this idea, it's going to be this BPM. I'm thinking about this kind of thing. I usually have references or I'll go through with him when we get to sit in the studio and actually go through like drum packs and go through all that stuff and be like, let's go with this. Let's start with this. Let's build yeah. with this. Or, or if he has a beat and I'm laying down vocals on it, I'll be like, these drums are a bit too abrasive. Let's go check out the drums. Let's go check out the 808s. Or maybe I'll hum a different, I'll hum on 808 pattern and stuff like yeah. that. So literally the, the most you can do as an artist who can't produce is literally what I do. <laughs> I'll be there literally just being like, we just need a little bit of this. Yeah. Or we just need a little bit more of this and we'll be good. And like, I'll send him samples. I'll send him just like little things. Or I'm thinking about this drum loop, lots and lots of voice memos. So. It's, it's very, very hands-on for both of us. And he'll tell me if the way I'm saying a, a word is super trash. I'll be like, this sounds like you're, you know, a conservative in the South. Why do you sound like this? And I'm like, oh, my bad. I need to, I need to change. Yeah. So, you know, he'll, he'll let me know. That's the no interesting reason. to hear because, like, not only does that reinforce my Kid Cudi perception of you, but uh, through, like, your humming that you just jumped on and like the fact that you're like you're so into the production aspect of it because I think that's like some of my favorite or at least on Iron Desire uh, it was one of my favorite pieces of it because it was just such a cohesively production eccentric piece of work which is like one of my favorite things in music is the production aspect of, aspect of it and it was it's like uh, it's neat to see how your brain navigates through all that oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. it's lots of listening to a lot of things a lot of the sessions we had would literally be just because he's he has a different upbringing than I do, right? And so he'll like um, will just sit. Some sessions we have like overnight, just listening to music. Like, what are you listening to? What's in your playlist? And then I'll share what's mine, and then we'll just kind of like debate what's hot and what's not, essentially. Yeah. And then be like, this is what I'm really feeling, and this is what I'm trying to take stuff. So it's oh, great. It's super organic. Moving into our second question, the five W's, which is our what, and I just want to know, what have you done differently when releasing your most recent singles that you didn't do for Iron Desire that has so drastically changed the reach and reception of your songs? Uh, well, when I was making Iron Desire, it was like my first project. It's kind of like the first thing I was putting out, like your first baby. So I was super like <laughs> meticulous with what I was doing on everything and just wanted to show people that I could sing, rap, ride a beat, flow, do all these things, right? Mm -hmm. And just create catchy hooks and catchy stuff like that. And that kind of like overshadowed a lot of the stuff because I became more focused on like trying to show that I can do these things as opposed to just making a great song, you know? So when people hear stuff now, you're not listening to it and going like, wow, this guy can really sing, this guy can really rap. You're just listening to it and being like, oh, this is good, or this is great, or this is stuck in my head, right? That's, that's the biggest transition I've done. And in terms of the actual song making process, like I'm doing a lot less of just sitting down and writing songs in full, just as is. I'm doing a lot more like messing around with flows in my head, listening to beats a bunch of times, mm -hmm. just kind of thinking about what is the thing that's sticking with me the most, and then figuring out what can I do that will express this energy more and more and more. So it's just kind of like making it a lot more organic, a lot more truthful, and a lot less making it have to be something. Interesting. You know? So are you even doing anything marketing-wise or distribution-wise different between the two, like your album versus your recent singles, that has changed anything, or is it just the music? 
Um, we're all, well, yeah, we're doing a lot of, um, of marketing stuff differently. We're going a lot of, when we worked on Our Desire originally, it was mainly just putting it out and hoping for the best, mm -hmm. but, which, is, which is not really the best thing you want to do as an artist. You kind of have to reach out to people and yeah. you have to like, you know, as much work as you put into the music, you need to put into the street work and mm -hmm. make and make sure that it goes out there and it reaches as many people as possible. So it's contacting people on Instagram, hitting people on Facebook, hitting people that, you know, run blogs, people that are doing like, you know, people like you even like go hitting up people and being like, hey, you have a dope platform. I'd love to help you if you could help me. And it's just yeah. kind of like a I scratch your back, you scratch mine situation. And yeah. that's and building relationships and just that's the biggest thing that we didn't do before not that we didn't want to it's just we didn't really have the connections to and we really believed in the music so i think the music's always been good but it's just like the means of pushing it hasn't always been the greatest so now okay. it's kind of like getting out there you think you'll eventually at some point maybe give i or desire a second release with all the new knowledge that you gained something to like revamp it I We've talked about it. We've talked about it. And, I, and yo, well, I, I want it. that. I support it. I love that thing so much. Yeah, no, trust. I love it, too. I love it, too. I want to, like, I want to do, um, I definitely want, if I was to do it, I would definitely do a remaster just to kind of get it. I want it louder. Maybe that's just, like, my problem. I always want music to be louder. So, like, I would want it just louder. I want the 808s and stuff to kick harder. And at the end of the day, I'd probably even want to do remixes with local acts around the city, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of like, that'll be the bonus track. So like, there's a huge trend going on right now with deluxes and stuff like that. So I'd yeah. probably do, um, literally just released like an Outcast Stankonia Deluxe. And that album came out in like 2000, right? right? So like, you know, like, be sick. I would, I would, I, I would definitely want to do it. That'd yeah. be so sick. And how could you crank, the, like, I don't think I could crank the volume louder on this album like whenever i listen to us it's always at 11. it's like never anything <laughs> lower we're gonna find a way <laughs> we're gonna find a way to put it up we're gonna, we're gonna create the 12th notch past 11. exactly the one spinal <laughs> tap couldn't figure out that's the one we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna find that notch oh gosh okay cool so i'm just gonna fly into our third question of our five w's which is our where and this one is not really location based i'm using this one okay. to attack a different place and so okay you do a lot of things like calling you a rapper is so one-dimensional calling you a singer is so one-dimensional there's there's such a plethora of the things that sam darko was able to do and I just want to know, where does your acting career sit in relation to your career as a music artist? Are they intertwined at all? Are you kind of keeping them separate? Or where, where do they sit in relation to each other? Um, they sit, um, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I would think that, well, not I would think, I would know. I, <laughs> I, I would say that, like, when it comes to music, yeah. There's a deep love I have for music because music is always going to be mine. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is like acting or the acting world. A lot of that is I'm performing to someone else's liking, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if I'm auditioning for a show, I'm auditioning so that the cast and director, the producer and blah, blah, blah can see me as this thing. And you're creating characters, yes, and you're having fun. I still am having fun doing all that stuff. Yeah. But it's just like, your music is, I don't need to ask anyone how to do it. I don't need to ask anyone what's right, what's wrong. There's this amount of freedom I don't have with everything else. And that's why I have this deep love of music. And I would say, yeah, where does it stand? Acting is a lot more lucrative. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it, at least quickly yeah. so i have a love for both but you know i would say at the end of the day i would probably be more music than acting okay. but i do have a deep love for acting i love getting into characters i went to school for it for for four years right so it's like you know for three years so like you know it's 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 something i'm never gonna let go it's something that's very important to me so like you know it's kind of like different it i scratch different itches you mm -hmm. know with it so yeah. I don't know, I have a deep I love for both. casting directors love when talent can also be musical and rap and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, trust me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna, well, you're going to see in uh, a little bit. I'm do, well, I do like acting, screen acting, and voice acting as well. Yeah. And that helps because I have a bit of a setup for recording stuff here at home. So, 
Like that was when you did the know. voice of Adam for Snapchat's Dawn of Battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was straight jokes. I had a great <laughs> I had a great time doing that. Yeah, uh, Atam was the, his name's Atam, and he's Atom. like um this this space commander um character and he's super fun because i get to do this like um this hybrid of accents yeah. so it's like an african accent mixed with other ac it's like an accent cocktail because i came it, in or is it, or is it, you lost it yeah yeah I, I came in and they basically like right, right before the lockdown i came in and i was gonna like um do an african accent and they're like that's great could you just like you know just don't lean too into the African thing. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? They're just like, you know what? Some words, just let them belong somewhere else. And I was like, <laughs> first off, crazy note to get while in the room, right? Like crazy note to be like, I prepared this thing. I try to be my best, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> you get in there and um, I start speaking my lines about, you know, the different types of ships and squadrons and all that stuff and mm -hmm. just using this accent and they seem to really, really enjoy it. So I've been back a few times to do that, a few other things as well, and it's just, it's great. It's great, yeah. That sounds like, I mean, voice acting's always been something I've always wanted to do since a little kid. It's always been something I've really dreamed of doing, which is one of the reasons I love this 5W's interview show so much is because I get to be so expressive vocally. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, it's, I mean, personally, me with a large acting and directing background, it's, it's always fun to talk to other actors and people in this world that kind of know it and then are also in, interested in the music world. It just, I feel like I can really understand and see a lot of the levels that people that don't have this background that we do see in music. Because like, oh, your, yeah. music, your music moves in such an instant, interesting, fluid way of kind of like, it's got, like the structure is so much more of a story than I think like, because you and also Cass, the guy from this last interview, is also an amazing actor. Mm. Both of your pieces of music, yours is a bit more hard-hitting, like, trappy. But, like, both of them both have such interesting story arcs throughout all of them. Even the ones through the songs that don't aren't fully story-driven just have so much more movement and balance and, like, ebb and flow to them, which I think is, like, a, a characteristic that, like, actors and, like, stage presences develop in this stuff, which I think is so interesting. Oh yeah, there's definitely a through line because I think the biggest thing when you're when you're doing a lot of acting stuff and making music is just you want to find the truth in everything, mm -hmm. you know? You want to find the truth and even if something doesn't necessarily make sense, you know, when you watch like let's say a Cohen a Cohen brothers film, right? Or you um, you know, you're listening to like uh what was the song my girl girlfriend's obsessed with it. Um Backstreet Boys, the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> what is my girlfriend loves this song? But back, I love it too. I don't know why I'm playing this. Back, that's the way of me getting into it. Um, Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Which, yeah. if you look at it right, the song doesn't really necessarily make much sense. If you look at the lyrics, right? There's many lyrical breakdowns on YouTube about like that song. It doesn't make much sense in terms of like as a song. If you read it like she wants this, he wants this, but that doesn't make any sense because it doesn't even connect to this, right? But if you listen to it, you register it because you kind of feel what they're saying, yeah. even though they're not saying it. So the truth is still there and the expression is there and therefore it works. But if it didn't feel truthful, it wouldn't work. So I think that's the through line between acting and music that I guess kind of goes unspoken. It's just kind of a feeling thing. It's all about truth and all about mm -hmm. if you can feel this, then it's then it's right, you know? Yeah, and like, I guess that's like also a testament because it's such a big like acting piece, the Backstreet Boys, and like, it's such a big like musical thing that they do plays in the, I believe there was a movie, it's like, it's also a big acting thing as well and that gets conveyed through the music and I think mm -hmm. that draws like lines back to you through like, you express so much character and personality I think character is actually the word I want to go with, not personal. You express so many different characters of yourself through your music, which is super interesting to hear. Another relation you draw with Kid Cudi, he is, he is also a really accomplished and big into acting as well. If you haven't oh, seen yeah. his stuff, he's, he's really good and it's, it's super impressive. No, no, it's, de it's definitely something that like, once you scratch that itch mm -hmm. as an artist, some people is fine. Some people, they try like music and they're like, okay, they make a little bit here and they'll be like, you know, I'm cool. I've done everything. But I don't really see an end to either music or acting for me. You know, I don't know. I don't see a part where that's going to be enough. And that's just like, 
I'm done. I've, I've done enough acting or I've done enough music. I don't know if that exists in my brain yet. Yeah. I just, it's, you know, there's always new areas to venture. There's always new things to discover, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really, really interesting to me. And I think the moment it becomes uninteresting, I'll stop. But I have no idea when that'll be. So I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. soon. I don't think so. I think you're just getting started in what is probably oh, yeah. going to be a long and super entertaining career to be following. Awesome. We're just going to jump into our fourth question of our five W's, which is our when. And we're taking it way back to a little known fact that uh, I adored and made me absolutely fall in love with you when I first met you. I was like, as soon as I heard this fact, I was like, man, this dude's so cool. He gets it. He's an artist. He knows what's up. He knows what's down. He's got Oh, taste. I'm interested in this now. This was, when did you first become a fan of jazz? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Good question. Good question. Okay, in high school, I had a teacher, an art teacher, in my, I want to say my senior year. Yeah. His name was Mr. Short. And Mr. Short, like, he knew I was obsessed with, at the time in high school, I was super obsessed with, like, rap music. I was trying to get into oldies. I think I was going through, like, my major Jay-Z phase, but also at the same time, simultaneously going through, like, a Prince phase and yeah. a few other things, right? Yeah. So... Like, lots of just, like, great music. And I was kind of hesitant about jazz. And he kept telling me, he's like, a lot of the things, the reason why you're connected with these artists is through jazz. And I was like, yo, you're tripping, Mr. Shaw. I don't know what you're saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's that, like, but he's, he sat me down, and he's like, during class, I would do these paintings, because he was an art teacher. I would do these paintings, and he'd say, all right, for each painting you come and give me, I'll, like, I'll give you a new recommendation, a new artist, new album, new era, teach you something. And then, okay, then after a while, he gave me this like Miles Davis book, mm -hmm. and it was called, I think it was Miles Chases the Voodoo Down. And it was all about like, the meaning of music to Miles Davis, but kind of like music as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and it was just kind of like amazing because it – talked about music in this way I always felt but never had heard before yeah so he just kind of he's like yo listen if you like all this music the only way to really because he knew I wanted to make music as well the only way to really like achieve something or learn a bunch of stuff about music is to go back to the basics go back to jazz so he would send me this thing or send me this thing and I listened to it and I got into I started with the miles with the cold train with just everything yeah. Herbie Hancock Ooh. everything and just got more and more and more into it to this wormhole of just listening to jazz and i will say this it it kind of unlocks this thing and i don't know maybe i'm just nerding out right now not, but like not, speaking to it, a fellow nerd. It, it kind of unlocks this thing um in your brain at least i believe that like you just you hear things that aren't there mm -hmm. when you when you're making music as a musician it's a very um powerful and very useful because you constantly have your you constantly have your ear to listening for things that aren't there, and then you instantly start approaching things differently. You start realizing that if a horn can make you feel different, then you know a certain flow can make you feel different, no matter what you're saying, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, right? So just certain sounds, certain tones that you have naturally, the hu the human body produces these sounds. Yeah. You could just do it. You don't even have to say anything. And then someone will just be like, oh, I feel that. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So it taught me a lot about just without having to spend thousands of dollars to go to music school, which I almost wanted to do. <laughs> it it kind of was a crash course for free on just kind of feeling in music. And I'm eternally grateful for that experience that Mr. Short gave me. He's part of the reason I even went to university because he almost flunked me. He told me I should have failed his class because I was skipping like all his classes near the end of the year, right? Yeah. But he brought me to the side and he's like, listen, you're a really smart guy. You're, you're really good when you assert yourself. You didn't assert yourself that much this year, but it's your final year. And I know you're a good guy. So I don't want me to be the reason why you can't do great things in life. So you know what? I'm gonna pass you. And he says, you're not getting an A because you weren't here half the time but you'll get a B and that'll be enough for you just to, to submit to any like, um, you know, universities, colleges that you want to go to and go through any programs and you can go be something. But just remember, not everyone's going to do this. So wherever Mr. Short is in the world, A, thank you for everything. 
he was a big part of how I like how I am the way I am now, the way I like feel comfortable nerding out on stuff. Cause he was just like he taught me that stuff is okay and like yeah. to always study. There's never such thing as like studying too much because you'll there's always new things to learn, you know? So Beautiful. Yeah. What a great story. I love, absolutely love hearing about other people's high school memories since high oh, school yeah. was once also for me the complete formative debut of me becoming an artist. And like I also had that mentor, Mr. Billow, who we're still friends with. We still do work together. He just acted in some commercials I directed uh, a few oh, months man. ago. And it's like the, the really, like those high school teachers that just vouch for you so hard are just so impactful and like they I, I, I we owe everything to those people they're just oh yeah so legendary awesome after we've, after we've just nerded out on about jazz for a while if you guys are still <laughs> here for all those people that like jazz like us the, yeah for those, cool those jazz connoisseurs uh, the like fine <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're just going to wrap this up real quick into our fifth and final question of the five W's, which is our why. And uh, taking us right to now, right to right now, actually right to five hours and 14 minutes from now when Ruby oh. Fox Fever, your newest single debut music video, drops at midnight tonight. It, this, it will be yeah. out by the time you guys see this video. But uh, yeah. I got I got a couple questions about this. We're gonna start it off with the title question. Why yeah. the album cover for Ruby Fever? For Ruby Fever, uh, why the why the cover? Like, why does it look that way? Yeah, I I think it's like it's one of the most interesting covers I've seen in quite a while. It's like oh, I find you. music covers to be really interesting. It's one of my favorite things about music is just hearing about them. I I ask a lot of artists about them on the show. Uh, but it's just, it's, it takes such a different approach to an album cover. It just really stood out to me. It's clean, simple design, simple lines. It's not a photograph like most album covers. It's not just like random weird drawings like a lot of other album covers. I feel like it fits into this niche category of being in a album covers that you just don't see often. It's like a bunch of little small figurines and it's just, it just was super unique. And I just wanted to know why the album cover, why the choice for this and like the creation of that? Um, uh, well, one, which the, the first reason is not that deep. The first reason is because it looks cool. Like yeah. <laughs> that's the first reason. But the second reason is a lot more. Um, the second reason is because well, it looks that way because it tell, like we talked about earlier, it tells a story. Mm -hmm. Even just looking at it, you see a bunch of um, crash test dummies on the ground and then a box and then a black dummy at the top wearing a chain, right? E even that's just supposed to kind of like get your mind going and thinking. And I won't explain it fully. I think it'll make sense, more sense when um, the song comes out and you listen to the song. But um, it, it had to be that because... I mean, the song at the end of the day is a motivational song. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't like kind of labeling it that, but it is. Like, it's, it's a song that's supposed to kind of motivate you to kind of like to do the, the best you can and kind of like, you know, I don't know how to, how to say it without sounding corny, but it's kind of just like, you know, it's one of those songs that just kind of tells you to, to get out and go do something. Get out and, and try that thing that you've been putting off. Just go and do that thing. And, yeah. It's about hustling and working and all that. And the kind of like, I guess the metaphor, one of the metaphors you can pull from it is we're all sort of dummies. But I guess if you can be the one like shining one am amongst all of them mm -hmm. to like, you know, have your moment, you should take that and you should go and be that, do that. You, you owe it to yourself, right? So, you know, it's, it's a big thing. It's a big, big thing. And it's also like, uh, one of the reasons is, is because it's just like, um, being a black artist today, right. Yeah. Amongst a lot of like rappers, you, you have a choice to, to just make something that sounds like everything else or to kind of like, just take a chance mm -hmm. and just try something different for yourself. Right. So uh, the, the album cover kind of says that as well, too. It's just kind of just like, I want to do what I want to do. And I may not mesh in or be the same color or be the same type of, of person or, in this situation, dummy. 
the same kind of person or dummy as these other dummies are. But this dummy has something to say as well. So it's kind of just that. And it's oh, exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm really excited to put it out. I am. I'm excited for it to be out. I mean, it's, it, I've been, yeah. I've, I've been so excited. Yeah, I've been, play, I've been playing it for people. Yeah. I've been playing it for. I've been playing it for people, and people are like, they hear it, and they're just like, "What the hell?" Like, I think that's my favorite thing about playing music for people, it, especially me, because I guess you meet me as a person, and you're just like, "Oh, this guy's maybe this guy's a little funny. This guy's a little nerdy." I don't know what he's up to. Uh, he's kind of tall. You know, I don't know. May, yeah. I may be stylish on that day. I may be rocking dad <laughs> outfits. It really does. It depends on the day for me. And you meet me and it, you get this impression. And then I play my music for you. Or you hear my music and you just, a lot of people don't believe that it's me whenever I play them my music. They, that's the first thing I hear. They'll be like, it's not, this is dope. This is cool. This is interesting. It's, this isn't you, man. Come on, y'all. Come on. Who is this? That's the number one thing I hear whenever I play music for people. So, 100%. like, I, um, I honestly agree with that. When I first heard Blue, what was the first song that came out? It, the intro yeah. was just so hard. I was like, I was like, this is this guy. Like, <laughs> I'm 18 years old at an album listening party for a song that sounds this good. I was like, no. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing. That's see, that's the thing, though, right? Like, I'm an actor, but at the end of the day. If I have a message I want to portray, yeah. as much as I don't play a character with rapping, it's as much as I, yeah, like, if I'm putting something out, I need to perform it. And I want, if I perform it, it needs, I need to perform it with some sort of conviction, some sort of sense of purpose. And when I do that, some people just don't believe <laughs> it's me. And I, I think it's really fun. I think it's an advantage because people are, con they're already surprised off rip. So, like, if I'm going to surprise you again... Every single thing I drop is a surprise. You don't know whether it's going to be more singing, more rapping, more, more you know, just wild talk, or if it's going to be motivational stuff, or if I'm talking about love, if I'm talking about race, if I'm talking about all this stuff. I have the advantage of, or the, yeah, the advantage of surprise. I, have the, I can always surprise people, and that's my biggest thing, and I want to abuse that for as long as I can. Because as long as people don't know what's coming, I can keep adventuring and trying different things, and to varying degrees, just... Be super dope in many ways. So yeah, and that, I want to keep that, that makes going. Makes a lot of sense because I never know what to expect when hearing a Sam Darko song. Well, I the one thing I do know to expect is it will not be the same all the way through. I know that. Oh sure. no, no that never movie. that. Because like Ruby Fever is like it's got parts that are so melodic and so much like like vibey, and then it just yeah. comes in. It's like hits you with that hard bass eight oh eights those rapping bars it's just like it there's so many ups and downs it's the one constant in your music is it's never the same throughout yeah. the song and uh i think ruby fear is a great blend of that like all your little ad libs i think are some of my favorite parts of this ruby oh Fever yeah song like I, I like the first time i was like okay he's got some bars he's got some stuff music video is pretty dope i like that a lot of neat shots but then the second time through i was listening deeper i hear like all these things coming in like side chain like like one-off ad libs that are just like just like your hums and like all your little ah, I, I'm totally <laughs> yeah. that, but like, well, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. How did you produce that sound? That's exactly the sound I was in the song. <laughs> What's going on here, man? Huh? What's going on? It's just it's it was such it's such a treat. And for anyone that listens to Ruby Fever, definitely take it back one or two times at least, and just like listen to the stuff behind it, and you'll get like such a more full picture of the song. It's it's really great. Can I tell a quick story about the making of uh, Ruby Fever? Yes. What do you think you're here for? I don't. I don't know the rules. <laughs> no rules. Rules are gone. What do you got? So the thing about Ruby Fever was Ruby Fever was the first song that I made here, like from home. So I've made a bunch of songs that are like I'm going to be releasing songs, a lot of songs this year in 2021, and Ruby Fever was like the first song that I made here that was kind of like, I felt it was good. We're going to, we're going to try and do something with this. And funny enough, it's funny you say like every single time you listen, you hear a new thing because that was kind of the dream Yeah. because this has been the most like funny enough the t the first song I make outside the, the comforts of a studio and mm -hmm. here at home is like the most complicated song like I've ever made. So this song cool. went through so many different variations, so many different versions, so many verses were on this song, yeah. so many different hooks were on this song. And it was like, 
those ad libs you hear, I had to do probably like, like I want to. It sounds ridiculous, but probably like twenty different tracks of just ad libs, whether it was doubling, tripling certain stuff, hums, harmonies, melodies, all this stuff. So it's 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 really interesting you say that because it's one of the most co probably complicated songs I've ever made. You listen to it and it's mad kind of easy to listen to, but like it's super just like so many different things are at play. Yeah. And there's there's many different versions Marvin has sent me because I would I would record all my stuff here at home, send it off to him. So he would like he sent me the beat. I was like this is super cool. I have an idea and I I send him the stru the song structure first. So I say it's going to be an intro, it's going to be a few but this like four bars, verse, hook we're going to do a bridge and blah, blah, blah. He's like, yo, this is a lot. And I was like, trust me, when it starts coming together, you'll see. Yeah. And then I sent him this, sent him two verses, whatever, whatever. Then it's like, oh, we got to cut this down. We start cutting it down. We start doing different things, adding this, that, the other thing. So he has to start taking away from the beat because I'm doing so many <laughs> things vocally. So he's literally just like, yo, I got to take this thing out. And I was like, oh, man, my bad. He's like, no, 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 it's good because we have a lot to play with, right? And it was, it's just, it's probably my, one of my favorite songs I've made so far amongst like the newer batch of stuff I'm mm -hmm. doing because it's just so like, uh, I guess, I guess it's the, um, because I didn't have a time limit in a studio and I'm just at home by my nerdy self, like, right. you know, just with a blanket around me and stuff like that. I'm just here. The, the first time I get an idea, if I wake up, I can just go with the run over and just put it on. Right. You say, I'll put this on, I'll put this on. So it's so dense and so big because it's just so like, it's, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I'm really, really happy with it. Awesome. Well, it's informing we're running out of time and space here. Uh, so oh, it's all good. I'm just going to wrap it up into a quick outro. But uh, I just want to know, if can, can you in like a couple sentences wrap up what the spirit of the Ruby Fever music video is? I've, I've been trying to break it down and it's breaking my brain. Is it about uh, anything? Is there something you can share? I've, I've, I've been, I tried, I tried. I gave it my honest effort. I give up, I throw in the towel. Um, the, well, the thing about the, okay, to make it really, really quick, um, Ruby Fever, the music video, like the feel of the music video, I mean? Like the shots and like, is the, like there seems to be a story. There's so many like elements that would be a story, but I'm just, I'm trying to wrap it all together with the song. And I'm just uh, wondering if you have any back behind like, from the brain of the artist, uh, insight into what you're talking about here. Um, okay, once you see the once you see the video, it uh, at least the people watching this, yeah. um, they'll start seeing that like uh, a lot of the shots are meant to kind of the, the a lot of the shots. Ooh, I don't want to give this away. It's kind of a it's kind of a gem. It's kind of a gem. But you, you know what? I'll say, I'll say this. Yeah. I'll say this. A lot of the shots are reflections. Yeah. Because it's supposed to reflect on yourself as a listener. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times there are a lot of mirror shots throughout the whole entire video. Mm -hmm. And they're meant to be kind of like an illusion or allu alluding to the idea that you, you, this is for you. This is meant for you to be saying this to yourself when, you know, okay. I, so yeah, the whole thing is just about you being a better version of yourself. So all this is for that. And the video itself is, super super just cinematic it's a very yeah. cinematic uh video very cinema porny you know very, like very uh indeed, lots indeed. of really cool shots yeah. so you're gonna be like oh how did they get that done how'd they do that oh did they get a permit to shoot there we didn't <laughs> nope. so <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> lots of really cool stuff so i think people are really gonna like it uh, I think they will also like it because it impressed me and I made music videos and I loved it. I thought it was great. I was, it was like finally a music video and it's, it's top tier. Hey, awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I think this is going to go down in history as one of the lar longest shows we've done and I, I wish it could be so much longer. But my disc <laughs> space my bad, out. I'm a talker. My disc space is running out and I don't want it to end right off. So thank you guys so much for walking, watching. This has been our interview breakdown. Just hang out, chill session with Sam Darko. Rapper, singer, actor, dope dude, and all around a nice guy as much as anything else in this world. Thank you so much for watching. Sam, anything else you want to plug? Uh, all the links for everything will be in the description to the music video, to his Spotify, to everything where you can find out more info on this guy. Uh, a lot of new music coming out from this guy. Be excited. Be on his pulse. 
Uh, there will be a lot coming out, and I'm super excited to see where this goes. Uh, Sam, you have the fat last final words. Amazing. Uh, well, hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, listening and all that. And yeah, I got a lot of new music coming out. Um, if you're in the Vancouver area, you watch TV, you'll probably see me soon. I can't say what it is yet, but you'll see me in something. That's why I'm growing my hair out and my facial hair. Tight, um, tight. This is not by choice. I, I prefer to be sexier than this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just keep your ears out, keep your eyes out. You will see me. So, and if you're a Vancouver artist, I'm looking to collab. Any artist in general, I'm looking to collab. I'm always open. So. You know, let's get to work. Let's make some amazing stuff. I think we can do some amazing stuff in this new year. So let's make it happen. Dope, dope. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to this man today. Uh, I hope it's not the last time. Uh, hey. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Maurice Sitter. This is Sam Darko for the 5 W's interview show. We've run the gauntlet. We've done our five. And I will see you next time.